What up, y'all? So I wanted to film a video basically talking about bottom surgery expectations slash the ones for bottom surgery. I have been meaning to make this video, so I said let me just do it because I want to. And I don't have my shirt on because I went to the gym earlier. I've been going to the gym, been working out. Honestly, post-surgery, I've really been right back to it. I'm not going to lie. I was literally lifting 10-pound weights at a week post-op. not telling you to do that. But, like, yeah, I wanted, I wanted to show what I'm looking like. I also had a fire shoulder pump today at the gym. So, yeah, no shirt. But <coughs> it's also getting a little hot in here. It's a little steamy, you know? So, basically, I'm going to go over, yeah, my wants for bottom surgery. So, if y'all didn't know, I guess I do want bottom surgery. I sometimes feel shameful even, like, saying it out loud that I want bottom surgery because a lot of thoughts go in my head, like, oh, my God, why would you want to do that to yourself? Like, you're perfect the way you are. And I feel like that's how I felt about top surgery. But I did it, and now look at me like I feel... Like, I feel better than ever. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, I wasn't going to die before, but it's, like, enhanced my life so much. Everything is just easier. I put on a shirt. I just go. I feel free. So, I feel like that's what bottom surgery is going to do. But I do have those thoughts, you know, like, damn, this is a big step. This is a big change. It's irreversible. But I, this is literally me saying this to myself right now. Like, top surgery was an irreversible thing. Getting a hysterectomy was an irreversible thing. Going on T. I don't think I'm gonna just sound like how I did pre-T. Like, I, I'm literally, like my whole body changed everything. I'm doing this for a purpose. It's not like a random thought. I wake up, well, let me just do this. No, you know, I made these permanent changes and they've been like amazing. But I don't even see it that way. Like, oh my God, I'm making a permanent change. Like, yes, I do think about that in the beginning just because I need to realize the severity of what I'm gonna do. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be on hormones. Let me think about it. Okay, I'm gonna get a surgery. Okay, let me think about my life with the the after the surgery how am i gonna feel and it doesn't phase me so again bottom surgery i'm finally like in a place where i'm content with me like i'm actually recognizing that i want it you know what i mean like because before i would shoot myself down i'd be like like i would kind of want to be like no 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 you're good how you are like that's a lot no 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 but now i'm like why not like if it keeps if i wake up every day and it's on my mind why not you feel me like nine times out of ten at this point like i'm so clear and tapped in with god and myself when i want something that's good for me like i know i know what's good and what's not you know what i mean like i know what's what's for me and what's not and this is this is for me um again i have told kaiser to i don't think i told y'all so i have told kaiser after my hysterectomy i did hit up kaiser uh, at about a month post-op for my hysterectomy i hit, uh, I hit up kaiser and i said hey let me get in touch with my therapist. Let's at least start the process therapy-wise. So right now, um, so my therapist, she's on a strike. Kaiser's like on a big strike. If you're in California, yeah, a lot of therapists are on strike. They're not getting paid enough, and I understand. So is she on strike? I think I called about two weeks ago. I haven't heard anything back because she's on strike. So when she's not on strike, I'm going to get in touch with her because I can't really see. I know it's itchy. I can't really see any other therapist because she's the therapist that has done my letters for, I believe, top surgery, my hysterectomy. So, like, she's my gender therapist. So, if they send me to another therapist, they're not going to know how to deal with trans. Like, only, only not all therapists deal with trans patients and doing the paperwork and the approvals for, like, surgeries or hormones and stuff like that. So, I'm waiting on her. But, yeah, I definitely, I hit up Kaiser. I started the process. I call it the Transgender Care Center where they get the process going. So, yeah, basically damn my nose is so itchy but so i hit up my therapist i think they talk i have to talk to a psychiatrist as well my primary care doctor and then i have to get electrolysis so electrolysis is what's going to happen first before any actual surgery so the consultation happens where i see a surgeon that's like that's what i really wanted to do i said you know I, i'm banking on yes i want to do it but i want to talk to like a surgeon like let's get on the same page and like then i can say 100 percent yes i'm gonna go through with this so i'm waiting on talking to my therapist seeing the surgeon getting a consultation once that happens we will if i say yes if i want to do it if it feels right um we will then decide what donor site i want to use and then once we decide that then we go ahead with electrolysis so electrolysis is basically the laser is it laser hair removal i don't think it's i think it's deeper than laser laser hair removal so like they literally go on with the laser and like um like tweezers and they have to pick out the whole hair follicle from each so if, say i want to use my i'm not using this arm because i have a tattoo i have a tattoo here but it's honestly a botched tattoo i don't think i told any of you it was supposed to be my birth name christina but my tattoo artist put an extra eye i know and i was just over it so i never got it fixed so 
I'm honestly fine with just using this arm if I choose to do the arm route. If I choose to do the leg route, that's another story. But um, let's just say, for example, I chose to use this arm. So really, the graft would be from like, I know the graft, I've seen people, it's more so like this area. So I don't even know if it would touch the tattoo. It might be like around, like literally around the tattoo to create my, uh, my phallus. <laughs> but yeah, I have hair, so let's say they wanted to use this, they have to go into each follicle and take out each and every follicle, you know what I mean? So that takes a year, that's what the, the person on the phone told me at the transgender care center, like, yeah, that's why also I wanted to get it going now. I'm kind of yapping, but I'm just telling you because I don't think I've even mentioned that I'm just, like actually getting the process started. But yeah, I was told like, just electrolysis in itself can take like a year and a year and a half, to a year and a half. So I'm like, okay, let me get this going now. So by the time I'm like 25, 26, like I can be ready. You know what I mean? Because it's not an overnight thing. And I kind of like that because it's going to give me time to like really sit with it and like, you know what I mean? Get ready mentally, physically, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, super excited about that. But I'm gonna talk about the once. So I did, I have like a whole list. I suggest that you have a, a list. Like I have been researching this. I've been researching bottom surgery for years now, at least five years. And recently in the last two years, I've been getting like specific information that relates to what I would want as an outcome and my expectations. So I've literally created a list um, of just like specific things that I'm gonna go over with my surgeon and like, you know what I mean? Just to get, as I wanna be answered. So. One of the biggest things that I have on here, I don't know if you guys can see it, it literally says get my money up and further research. So when I'm on for real, like I, I'm good now, but when I have a bigger platform and more money, I want to further research for phalloplasty. Um, I'm still gonna get it now in the state that it's in, but I definitely think things like the erectile device could be a lot better. Um, like I feel like there could, there's, could be something out there that's just a better solution. So I'm still gonna get phalloplasty now, but long term i want to like invest in phalloplasty in general and then i also want to invest in the erectile devices because a lot of so let me explain because the actual creation of the phallus phallus i hope you guys know what a phallus is i'm talking about a, a dick bro so the actual creation of the phallus what i've researched does not look bad to me i like i'm cool with that because the first stage was the which is the at least how i've been seeing it the first stage is the creation of the phallus the second stage is like um my buddy second stage is glands plasty or like i guess the detailing right to create the the head of the of the phallus to separate it from the shaft so it looks like a, you know what i mean it has some separation third stage is the erectile device the most complications that i've heard usually come with the erectile device i've also heard that's that's just what i'm going off of and that's like the only thing that kind of like not irritates me but that's something i wish was a little bit better is the erectile devices because trans men can either use a because the phallus does not get hard, that's the only thing. So they have a semi-rigid rod, which I personally don't think I would get because I've had prosthetics that use a semi-rigid rod and I just don't like the, I don't like the click clacking because you have to bend your, it's a, it's a rod, so you, I don't like that. The second option is a prosthesis, which cis men use and it's called the Titan Coloplasty. Colo, colo titan, it's called, a, it's called a Titan, people just say Titan. Um, and it's an inflatable, so they put it inside your phallus and you have a pump in your scrotum. So my phalloplasty, I would also want scrotoplasty, which is the creation of balls, ball sack. Um, I want the whole thing. So basically they, you have a pump in your scrotum that you can pump your dick up. I like that option just because it's more natural. Like I don't always have to be hard. Like I could just, you feel me? Like squeeze on my balls a little bit, you know what I'm saying? If I'm getting touched on, felt on, if I want to penetrate, I could just do that. Boom, 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 boom pumps up. I'm ready to penetrate. I like that option. So, but yeah, I feel like there's something better out there and I would definitely want to do my diligence and research that. Um, so yeah, so some of the things that I want, first off, which is really important to me, I am getting bottom surgery, yes, to feel comfortable just, you know what I'm saying, being in life, but definitely it is with sex. One of the things, one of the reasons that I want bottom surgery in regards to sex is I want to be able to um, ejaculate into my partner uh i just really like that idea i i really love that i just really do because like i i i come in her right now but i want oh my god this is so i'm sorry babe but like i want to um you know what i'm saying I, I want i want my actual fluid to be all up in here i, I really do I, I i really do i don't know <laughs> i want that and it's possible so let me let me explain so 
Yeah, my mom was texting me. I got I got a little like Mondo texting right now. I'm talking about coming in, coming in. My, stop, stop. Okay, but yeah, it's possible because the same way I secrete fluid right now, uh, they can leave. I think it's the the skein, the skein gland. Is it that? I don't know. But there's a part in me right now where like when I when I nut when I come right now I do secrete fluid. So if they just keep that and. It just comes out of my phallus. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, it's possible. I really want that to be an option. So that's what I'm going to bring up to my surgeon. The next thing that's important to me is length. I definitely want my my phallus to be at least six inches to seven and a half inches. At least six inches. Six is, lo is low. 6.5 would be my, my go-to because I've had prosthetics that were five and a half inches. And I didn't like, like, it just didn't feel like enough for me. Like, it didn't feel like home. And then I've had prosthetics that were six and a half to seven and a half inches, and they felt like me. So I would really prefer like a seven, but six and a half, six minimum would be amazing. I'm okay with that. Anything less than a six, I'd, I'd rather not even do the surgery. I'm not, I'm not, I'm sorry. I'd rather not do the surgery. Like, I'd rather not do the surgery, period. Like, these things are non-negotiable also, should I say, because... You know what I'm saying? I'm doing these things. I'm 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 down for the procedure if I'm gonna get the results that I want. And I'm also I also do trust in like the universe and in God because I remember I was getting top surgery and I was so scared, bro. I was looking at everyone else's results and I was like, okay, I know what a good result is and I know what a bad result is. I hope I don't get a bad result. And I kind of just trusted my surgeon, bro. And I just trusted God. And I just did the surgery. I woke up, I was like, and like to, to see my chest how it is i cannot be more thankful like my chest looks amazing so i know that if i can get results like this i think i know it's possible to get even more amazing results in my bottom area so i'm i'm totally trusting with that again when i talk to the surgeon face to face i can get their vibe i'll know if they actually care about me and you know what i mean getting the best results i uh, because here's the thing you know people may think oh the surgeon they just want to get money out of you that's true if they're not a good surgeon, but then some surgeons, they do it because they really, this is their profession, they wanna master this. So I have the mentality that a really good surgeon, if I vibe with you and I understand that and I, and I see you're genuine, you're gonna do the best you could possibly do on me because your surgeons are like artists, okay? This is, they, they, they're artists. Someone had to sculpt my chest, look at my chest, make it proportion, they're artists. So. I mean, they're artists. Look at the way they get the scapula cut. They're artists. They're they're artists. So, if someone takes their craft seriously, they're gonna try to do their best on me. So that's enough for me. If you're doing your absolute best on me, because I'm a, however my body comes out is a representation of you and your skills. So, I would hope you would do an amazing job. So yeah, that's just something I've been telling myself and that I know to ease myself with the results because I'm like, okay, if I choose a really good surgeon that cares about the work, I'll be fine. Period. So yeah, the length. Uh, next, I don't want my prosthetic. My prosthetic. <laughs> See, not a prosthetic. It's not a tape. I want my I want my phallus to be to not be too girthy, but I don't want it to be pencily either. Because I've seen a lot of people, especially if they use your, their leg or mostly with the if they use their thigh, which I'm also I'm considering as well because I feel like I don't know. It's more it's more uh, the scar is more concealable. Um, I'm honestly open to using my arm or my thigh, but I'm just saying. I've seen a lot of phalluses where post-op they're like super girthy like like beer can size like like huge phalluses and I'm just like that's not realistic um I want I want my dick to be like not too my bad I ran out of storage but I want my dick to not be too skinny but also not super fat so like that's a very important thing and I've also been like considering I know if I do use my thigh I would literally get super lean and I would ask my surgeon if I were to get super lean, if I gain weight, would my dick gain weight as well? I don't think it would because it's already, the graft has already been taken from my thigh. So if my thigh gains fat, it's not going to affect my dick. But yeah, that's a, that's an option. Just get super lean because if not, it also leaves an indent on your thigh because there's so much fat. So you can see the fat versus the, it, I've done a lot of research. So I know if my arm is used, you don't have to worry about it being too girthy because you know what I mean? Your forearm, at least mine, is already relatively lean, so it's not going to be like a beer can. But if I use my thigh and I leave them how they are, it's going to be ginormous. So I already know I already know my game plan with that. Like, if I use my thigh, I have to get super lean, basically get as much fat off of it, off my thigh as possible to then use for my phallus because I don't want a big... You know what I mean? Like, who's who am I going to penetrate with that, bro? Like, 
You feel me? Like, girl, holes be like this tiny. How am I going to penetrate with this? You feel me? I don't even want that in my pants all day. Anyways. Next, I want to make sure with my surgeon that there's a CT scan being done before they check. Okay, because look, whether you're going to use my arm or my thigh also depends on how alive the nerves and all the tissue is within it. So I, I would opt for, I want to get a CT scan of my arm or my thigh, whatever they choose to use. I want them to do that beforehand and see if my blood vessels, if my nerves, if my veins are all healthy before they actually do it. I think they're healthy, but I want to see if, if the blood flow is going to be enough to where it can sustain a whole phallus and then the you know what i mean because i've seen a lot of cases where not a lot but i've seen cases where well i, I know this one guy he got um he used his thigh and they went in to get the graft from his like left or right thigh and when they took the graft off they realized there wasn't any good nerves or the vessels weren't good enough so they had to put that back on and use his other leg like i don't i want to i want to avoid them going into my body and then while i'm sleeping under anesthesia they realize oh this is not a good side and then have to go, like that's doing too much like i want you to know i want to know what we're getting into before it gets i want y'all to know what you're going to get into before you get into it like i don't want y'all to guess when you're in my body like when you're you know what i mean like i don't want there to be any guessing i want you to know okay we're going to use his left leg it's going to be perfect there's enough i want to i want i want to know i want to be sure because i'm not playing bro this is not this is not time to play we uh, so yes Next, uh, I also want to see pictures of healed results from whatever surgeon because I've seen results that I loved from different surgeons because the results get posted from patients. So I've, I've looked at a lot of dicks. I'm not going to cap. I've looked at a lot of dicks. That's honestly what made me want it because I used to have this preconception that all bottom surgery was ugly and botched. And it's like, nah, what are you looking at? You feel me? Like, are you looking at a day post-op results or are you looking at people's results a year healed, two years healed? That's when you see the real healing. Like for top surgery, if you saw my chest the day after it was done, you'd be like, it was all concaved and like bruised and no but like now you'd be like i'm down because you see how it looks like you feel me healed when i'm when i'm back worked out healthy walking drinking water eating enough food not just not post anesthesia having eight and six you know what i mean like dehydrated that's not when you want to make a decision so i've seen a lot of results of people that are one year post-op two years post-op post um all, everything just like healed so i would want to see my surgeons healed results to really get a glimpse of like what uh it's gonna look like you know what i mean just what i want to know what i'm getting into so i want to see the healed results that's all that's going to give me a good gauge as to can i really trust your work or not so yes next um so i did mention the erectile device but i do know some trans guys in the community that get phalloplasty and they don't need an erect and they don't need an erectile device right away because their phallus is already rigid enough for penetration so what i mean by that is i mentioned there's stage one two three sometimes after stage one your phallus is rigid enough like it's not super flabby and squishy to where you can't penetrate it's is rigid enough to where you can penetrate and do what you got to do so that would honestly be amazing for me because i don't ideally i don't want to have to wait till the end of stage three to have sex or like use my phallus and a big thing for me is i definitely used to not want to get the erectile device or i feel like i didn't care about the rigidness of my phallus but knowing me i'm gonna care i remember i was off t and my bottom growth wasn't getting as hard as it was because i was off t and testosterone like makes my dick get super hard so when my dick's not super hard and like i just don't get aroused when it's not hard because to me being hard is like it turns me on too you know what i mean so like if i'm getting head or something and my dick is like super soft like like what's the point like why am i you know what i mean like just like as me as like the masculine person i am i just don't like being soft during sex so that is a big thing for me i'm definitely gonna get an erectile device but before that i do want to at least be rigid enough to where it's like you know what I'm saying? It has a little bit of uh, solidity in, within it. So that's a big thing for me. Again, not the end of the world, but it's just not ideal to have to wait till the third stage, you know what I mean, to actually have sex because usually between the first stage and the third stage can be like a whole year gap. So do I really want to be sexless for, you know what I mean? And again, I don't even like getting head when I'm not hard. So like that just, that's just me though. That's just me. Okay. Next, um, I don't want a phallus that's too high or too low. I've seen results where sometimes, like, I just don't want it to be in an odd place. Like, 
I want it to, to be natural as possible, like in a place that just makes sense because I've seen some phalluses be too high up on your pelvis region and then I've seen some be like way too low and just like disconnected droopy, like I don't like that. Like I want it to look and feel like it's attached to me tightly and, and in the right place. So that's a big one for me, not too high and not too low because no, I'm paying too much money, too much time, and too much effort for my dick to be in a wrong place. For you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's basic, basic bare minimum. I, I don't want it to be in the wrong place. Same thing with my nipples. Like I would be I would be distraught if my nipple was like up here or if it was like up, you know what I mean? Like take the time before you attach that shit to me. Make sure that's not shit. Take your time before you attach the phallus to my body permanently. Can you please? You know what I'm saying? Get the ruler out. Get the ruler out. Make sure it's proportioned to all. Thank you. Thank you. Next. So something I wanted to do, I wanted to switch my shot location because uh, if I'm using my legs, I would switch my shot location because I do do my T-shot in my thighs, in my muscle. So I'm like, okay, if I'm going to use my thighs, I definitely want to stop doing it in my thighs because I feel like that's going to... That's kind of why I don't even want to use my thighs in the first place because I've been doing my T-shot in my thighs and I feel like... There, my nerves have been I'm pretty sure I've hit a nerve or, or three or five doing my tee shot so like I can only imagine how responsive my legs are gonna be but then again they're big pieces of meat they're big hunks of meat so they could be fine I don't know but that's just something in the back of my head and I would definitely talk to my surgeon and my endocrinologist about that because I'm like are my legs affected which is again why I want to get a CT scan to check the blood vessels nerves in my legs if I use my legs because let's not guess like I do my tee shot in there and my legs have been through stuff let's check and make sure everything is like working properly to the degree that we need it to be working so that's a big one for me next okay so next i, I definitely have preserved sensation is a big one for me um yeah so again i said that they use nerves and blood blood vessels don't give you sensation it's really the nerves so wherever i would use i wanted the nerves to be just like immaculate because sensation is a big one for me i'm not doing this surgery to have no sensation i want to be able to feel the top of my dick to the bottom to my ball everything so sensation is a big one for me how can we keep that intact mostly next i already mentioned do i need to lose weight i already i already had that doubled in my notes just to know if i'm using my thighs i need to lose weight not necessarily because i'm fat but it's just it's not even like a fat shame thing it's more so because i know how results will come out if i have too much fat on my thighs and i already have naturally fat thighs so i will have a beer can penis and i don't want that so it's not even about me being fat or anything because i'm fine like how i am right now but we're talking about a surgery that's going to be with me for the rest of my life like I, I will i will lose a little bit of body fat to make sure that my my phallus is not ginormous in girth like the length i don't care but the girth i don't want that i, I don't want that i'm cool with like a you know what i'm saying like 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 that but i do not want no like i shouldn't have to hold it with two hands you feel me like i've seen that okay you think it's a joke but i've seen that i'm trying to tell you i've done my research i know what's good results i know what are not good results for me personally like to somebody else they may love that they may, they may love that and their partner may accommodate them. But like me, my situation, my life, mm -mm. Mm -mm. I literally want something similar to the prosthetics that I use. And which is why I honestly encourage y'all before you get bone surgery, bro, try a lot of different prosthetics before it. You know what I'm saying? Try, just try them. Find one that feels like home to you. I felt what feels like home. And that's literally what I'm taking and putting in my notes that I want. You feel me? Like a six, a six and a, a six and a half or six inch to seven inch seven and a half inch prosthetic you know what i mean because i i, I know what i like I, I know what i like what feels like home so basically recreating that in a permanent manner so yeah <sighs> excited but yeah this is not gonna happen for a while again it's not gonna happen overnight you guys are not gonna see me like tomorrow done you know what i'm saying post op no it's gonna take a while so i'm just telling y'all now that's what it is um I can't even cap them. I, I want to do it. Game. I want to do it. And I'm basically already there. Like, I, all of a sudden now, I had the whole hysterectomy, ophorectomy. Like, it's just happening, bro. I don't even have to force it. It's just happening. Like, I was just on the phone with Kaiser. Now I want to start the process. Like, it's just happening. And, like, I know I'm choosing to make these phone calls and, like, do it. But, like, it just feels so natural. Like, I don't really have to do much. It's just like, hmm. Like, if it's flowing. Which is cute.
it's cute. But yeah, so the main reason I'm even thinking about this again, sex. It's really sex. And feeling comfortable within myself because, yeah, man, I, I love sex. And it's not always ideal to have to go put on a drug strap, harness, oh, you know, I uh, just want to be ready to go whenever I want to. I, I like that aspect. So, yeah, just, I really just am chasing the freedom. Um, the freedom, like with my top surgery, now I could. There's freedom. I can take my shirt off. I can, I can do whatever. Bottom surgery. I can do whatever. You know what I mean? If I want to take a piss in the park and there's no bathroom, I could just whip it out. So, yeah. If you guys have any more questions, ask me. Um, I think I know a lot about this process now. I've, like I said, I've been doing my research, so I do have some answers. Um, I haven't actually went through it. So if you're asking me about like detailed answers about like the post life i don't have that because i'm not there yet but i do have a lot of insight in this like waiting period slash like journey of right now so go ahead ask away hope this video helped you hope you enjoyed hearing me yap about my dick and how i want it to be and i gave you a lot of information now you know the length of my dick because i know it's gonna be that i'm not accepting nothing lower nothing sorry nothing wrong with like the four inches and stuff but this is not me Alright, so <laughs> I'm gonna get off here. Appreciate y'all. Love you guys. Mm.